Welcome everyone to the teams. Just waiting for Leg Dog. He's running a bit late, but good day to everyone. Teams come out in about 10 minutes. So uh, what we have is we have the extended bench for those joining and playing along at home. Should be about 10, 15 minutes. Do you know what I mean? So uh, the team thus far, though, that we know is Nick Newman, Jacob Wheater, and Lewis Young. Lachlan Cowan, Mitch McGovern, Blake Akers, Sam Walsh, Patrick Cripps, Oliver Hollands, the guy just above me, Ed Kerner, Harry Mackay, Jay Sauce, Corey Durden, Charlie Kerner, Jesse Motlop, Mark Pitney, George Hewitt, Adam Chera. And we know one of them will be Alex Chincotta on the bench, but the other three will be one of Plowman, TDK, Kemp, O'Brien, Unney, Fisher and Kennedy. So we're waiting for that confirmation of the teams. Um, some people are saying that out. Oh, we've got the extended one. Um, to be honest, I I'm okay if Hewitt's there if he's fit. My my issue is he doesn't he hasn't been at his usual best. His his numbers are pretty impressive. It has to be said, but he's not the best. Um, could we unleash Cowan off halfback? Is it, you know, this is why I want to try and get him in the VFL. Um, I'm hoping we see that. So we're just uh, waiting for the confirmation. It should be any time now. But at the moment, that's uh, what we're looking for. We're waiting for that. So waiting for the confirmation. But what's everyone thinking this weekend? I'm actually quite excited. How are you all feeling? Let me know. Let me know. I, I'm super stoked, you know. I am. Do you know what I mean? Call me crazy. It's not the first time. It's not the first time someone's called me crazy, to be honest. But that's it. Um, For those playing along at home, Skilder, they've gone Battle Dougal Howard. Great name. Got to say. Cal Wilkie, Ben Patton, Sinclair, Wanganine, Mawera, Mason Wood, Ross, Burns, Philippo, Ill, Iggins, Owens, Gresham, Membry, Marshall, Crouch, Steele, and their bench will be four of Hunter Clark, Stocker, Butler, Windhager, Corby, Cordy, Bytel, Sharman, or Tom Campbell. So it's going to be interesting. One of the biggest games in a long time. McGovern will be laid out. You know what? It, you, you, you know what? It's just one of them things. I'm good, mate. I am very good. So we just basically wait and see. But I, I, I agree, this is a big game. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, I, I've got leg dog, but with hair. I just saw that he wasn't here, so I thought I'd jump in. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? Oh, you know, just a uh, leg dog. Just text me saying five to ten minutes late. I mean, classic. Classic leg dog. That's okay. That's what a team's for. We support each other. We're there for each other. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, unlike Carlton, we we fit the bill, lay out, just just uh, just on bounce. Well, when you when your mate when your mate needs when your mate needs support, you gotta be there, ready, willing, and able. And that's just what's happened. Hey, uh, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, at least we've got some authenticity about the show with last minute changes, which turns me on. Yeah, just as you were saying, McGovern's going to be a laid out. <laughs> out goes Lech Dog. <laughs> I tell you what, it, it's going to be one of them entertaining things. Look, we've got uh, we've got the three way Lech Dog in a car. Hey. Uh, I might have misjudged things, gentlemen. I might be put in the car park of the pub, so I might have forgotten about one little commitment this afternoon. That's all right, mate. Well, I've got you back. I mean, if you want to oh, go yeah. back and enjoy, if you want to go back and enjoy the beers, me and Terry can cover it for the last fifteen. All right, I might actually do that. God bless you, boys. Love you, mate. We got your back. We got you. We back. love you, lad dog. Peace out. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, that that is the most counting thing ever. Like, isn't it? I, I didn't turn up to teams because I was on the beers. <laughs> I forgot to get on the plane to Adelaide. I forgot the team bus was going. Lucky O'Brien. It's yeah. Well, you know what? It's good to smile again. It's good to laugh again. Tell you what. Oh, 
you, you, you know what, Terry? When we're in the shit, there's no one I'd rather do. I mean, what did you think of the initial teams? Like, obviously, I went on Twitter yesterday and it felt like Carlton had lost by 70 before we had a bounce. How did you feel about it? <laughs> uh, how did I feel about it? I mean, I have never agreed with the five, six changes that has been suggested amongst social media this week. Um, I think there should be some omissions. But what did I think of the team last night when I saw it? I thought, oh, I didn't think much of it, to be honest. It was like, Sard's out, he's injured. McGovern's on the field, so you'd say he's going to play. Um, he's had two weeks to get over his soreness, we'll call it. And um, I was mindful of who they were going to pick. Would it be Chincotta? Would he play? Or would they go with Kemp? That's really where my mind was at. Now, you know, from what they said today, sounds like Chincotta is going to play. So, um, so there's that. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm as angry as I am. Let's just get, give them the opportunity to do the thing on Sunday. And if they do the thing on Sunday, then we can discuss it. And if they don't do the thing on Sunday, well, I'll tell you what, mate. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, I mean, I've been quite positive this week, uh, which yeah. is which is a new pom. It's a new pom. We don't often see this pom. So, um, yeah, expect fireworks should Carlton let us down. I, I don't know if I can keep positive pom up for much longer. But I agree with you. I mean, I, I think as the week went on, I had less and less changes. I think if we'd done this show Monday... I probably had like 22 changes. Do you know what I mean? I was I was recalling Cooter and players like that. It was that bad. But I don't mind it. I think this midfield probably does need another chance, another opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I think as a collective, I'll give him another chance. Uh, I was very curious to see that Dow was not even named in the extended bench. I, was, I felt like... Uh, that was interesting as well. It's probably my fault. Um, Bugs Bella will enjoy it if he's in chat because I, I, I was team Dow this week. So um, probably blame me for underlining the end of his career. Sorry, Paddy. <laughs> yeah. No, look, it is one loss. And I, I, I've been really cautious not to get too caught up in it. It's just something about it that just put a red alert off in my mind. But again, this is a great, there's no better opportunity than to fix it than Sunday and to win and win well, which I think we're capable of doing. I don't know if you guys saw my interview with Jake from Saints TV. There's just an underlying confidence with the Saints supporters and it sickens me. Yeah, it, it does, to be honest, it does. I mean, I, I'm with Michael all the way from LA. I can't believe someone is watching us in LA, but um, g'day to you, Michael. I'm sneakily confident and I think Mel nailed it here. We seem to do better after a loss. I think the real evolution of this side is when they get out of that mentality, that they need yeah. an ass kick in to perform. Because I've got a real feeling, and call it naive, but Anzac weekend, backs to the wall job. It's the narrative, isn't it? It's the narrative. And is there anything more Anzac than backs against the wall coming out and absolutely dicking St. Kildare when no one expects you to do? Yeah. Yeah, I think also I watched um, Ash Hansen's press conference today and I was looking forward to the press conference because I thought that every bit of language this week was important. I love the fact that there wasn't a lot of us talking in the media this week. It was very much a, a quiet and batten down the hatches job. Um, but the way Ash Hansen spoke about um, going too vertical, not getting the overlap run, uh, and identifying that, I, I was pleased to see that, and that's just what I want to see this week. Our midfield is 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 great. Our midfield is great when it's when they're all there, and I think I don't know what the reason is for why they haven't had that same spark. Maybe just because they haven't all been there at the same time. I don't know, but it's time. It's time for them to lift the whole lot. But starting from the midfield, it, it's it's time to get serious and lift. Mate, spot on. And this is a game, and like uh, Cameron here, when was the last time we beat them? And the best name on this channel, your mum, because it always makes me giggle when I do it. But you should remember it. I went mental on live stream when we beat them, because do you remember Charlie Kerner? Yeah. It was like his second touch of the ball, one step, 60 metres. Cardman was sat where Terry was. He, he went biscuit arsed at that point, and Pom lost it. <laughs> is that the last time we beat them, 2021? 
Yeah, it doesn't even mate, I was I was here for it. I remember it. I was up and about. I remember people calling me a mountain chart, saying he's the Charlie Kerner who's going to win the Coleman next year. One step, sixty meters. Oh, mate, I was up and I remember it like yesterday. Yeah, I, from memory, we were coming off a real shellacking the week before, like a bad loss the week before. It might have been the week after North Melbourne potentially. It's it, well, I mean, to be fair, Carlton winning good games is usually after the back of a shellacking in the last decade. Yeah. Tell you the other thing I'm pleased about. I, I like the fact that Steele is playing and that Membry is going to play. I don't want Mate. there to be any misgivings about the, the result on Sunday. I want I want the Saints at their best. I mean, they've got, I've got St. Kilda supporters telling me that I should be worried about guys like Caminiti and Owen. I mean, for fuck, this is the state of where we're at. This is the state of where we're at. St. Kilda supporters up and about. Mate, and while you're talking, teams are officially in. So right. out goes Adam Saad, Lachlan Plowman, and Million Dollar Man himself, TDK, is managed in Bunny Ears. Chincotta and Govan come in. So your back lines, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Witter and Nick Newman and Lewis Young. Chincotta, McGovern and Akers. Your centre line, Walsh, Cripps, Hollands, Fisher, Mackay, Jasos, Durden, Kerner, Motlop. Are your forwards, Pitonet, Hewitt, Chera, with Kennedy, Kerner, Josh Honey keeps his place. The man who uh, got four last week from Big Terry, uh, Lachlan Cowan. They've, they've given him the faith. Fair. I love the fact that Pluto is playing Soul Rock. Love it. You know what? And TDK's kind of escaped a bit of criticism, hasn't he, through all this? He he was, I think it was fair. When we looked at our ratings, both of us didn't like TDK last week. So maybe a chance for TDK to go into the VFL and really hone his craft because he was one who absolutely got monstered, didn't he, last week by Mr. Riley O'Brien? Absolutely, he did, yeah. Wow, that's a statement. That is a bit of a statement. I like it. I like it. Uh, I'm not a fan of Josh Honey playing. I don't think, like, I mean, if last week was his last chance to show something, I guess he gets another one. But I understand structurally what we're doing because always he's not ready and Martin's not fit, etc. So I do understand it. Um, but it, it's just like another one of those situations where it's like, mate, you're playing. Come on. Let's go. Hey. These opportunities, like you've only got to look at, I, I always think that these players need to look at Dow. These yeah. opportunities pass you by very quickly. Do you know what I mean? One minute, you're cock of the walk. Next minute, you're just the cock. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're just gone. Like, as harsh as it sounds. And for Jacob, <laughs> for Josh Honey, he, he could be packing our, co our bags in coals before he knows it. Ha happens very quickly in this game. Yeah. No, this is this is the this is one of the 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 big um, gut check performances this week because it's it's really it's really binary the response this week. It's either going to be very happy or very very angry. Mate, I, I, I'm actually excited with that because I needed a statement at the selection table. Yeah. To be honest, I, I needed just like I needed just one statement. I didn't care what it was at this point. Now I was like, someone needs to be called though. Maybe that's the pom in me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Someone needs to be sacrificed for me to feel atoned. I think TDK is probably the biggest statement because really, if we're honest, the midfield have got TDK dropped. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The midfield have got him dropped. So that is all on these midfield midfielders, really, to go, Jesus, we've just we've cost our mate a gig here. We so need to be on this week. If he's been managed, does that mean he won't play in the VFL because it's a body issue, a soreness issue? Well, I mean, managed is always like that, the nice way of saying omitted. I mean, he's on the extended bench. I mean, you could see him being sub. You never know. If, like Voss, perfect day, bring him on for 10 minutes, last 10. Be an interesting one what they do because you look at the interchange, one of our subs will be O'Brien, Kemp, Plowman, TDK. Right. I, I don't think there's any worth in playing O'Brien as the sub when he's only had one game in the VFL. I think he needs continuity. I hate the sub because I think you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. So 
maybe Kemp's sub. I'd like him to have a full VFL game, though, TDK. You know, to go back to just smashing it and yeah. having a little bit of an easier time. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I like the statement. Uh, nothing against Tom. I think he's had a okay year, apart from a few down performances. I think it's a good op- it's a good opportunity. Pito's obviously built up, up as well his game time. His first two games, he only played 53% and then 54% of game time uh, the following week. Last week, he upped it. I think he was in the 70s from memory. So he looks to now be... You know, full fitness. Also, he missed a lot of the game last week. He had the the laceration to the eye, right? Yeah, that was a big hit as well. If you actually look at the pictures from training, he's 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 going to get the girls with that scar. Got to say, it's a it's a good look for him. Do you know what I mean? We've all had them right hooks. Yeah, we have. So it's going to be interesting. And obviously, a few people asking about injuries. I thought the injury list this week call me crazy, but I actually enjoyed the injury list because the cavalry is returning, isn't it? We've got Jordan Boyd, VFL, this week, Cottrell next week. That kind of competition is starting to come back. We've got Pettinat, obviously, here. Sad one to two weeks. Guarantee he misses WA. So that is two weeks. But Martin back into skills training. March Bank into the skills training. Dot running today. The cavalry slowly returning. Yeah, the cavalry is slowly returning. And the next two weeks in particular are important for a number of guys who have been inconsistent, I would say, with their form. Senior players included. Oh, mate. And I I think Cottrell coming back, really exciting. Because I I think that allows the option of maybe Fisher. Because I I think some of these players, and I'd love to know your thoughts, Terry, in chat. Some of these players people want to drop, I think are down to VFL form but also fitness. I could see Fisher, if Cultural was playing VFL, probably would have made way this week. Yeah, Fisher's gone uh, poor game, good game, poor game, good game, poor game. He's three and two. Three down games, two good games. So based off that, he's going to play well this week. But you're right. If there if there was a fit and firing Cultural there, if there was a fit and firing Jack Martin there, uh, then it, this might be a different conversation. Oh, mate, I'm with you. I mean, it's one of them things I think I think Boyd, that says to me, Cowan, he needs a VFL break. For a man who's watched a lot of Cowan, this role's killing him. Right. This role will kill him. He's a natural ball-winning player. So I'd love to give him four weeks in the VFL and say, go and get 30 touches, go back to what you're good at, work on a few things, and then we'll see you in four or five weeks. Hmm. I'm excited. Get around in chat. I am. I'm excited. I'm excited. I just don't know how Honey kept his spot. Probably because you gave him a four last week. Can't believe I gave him a four last week. I was all over the shop last week, mate. <laughs> to be honest, I was generally worried about your your mental well being about ten minutes into that show. <laughs> you single handedly ripped me back to life on Monday. I think. Do you know what I mean? I've got to say, I was genuinely worried. I thought, oh no, we can't lose Terry. He can't quit. Do you know what I mean? He can't quit this show. I'm going to retire if we lose this week. Fuck it. Well, I mean, that leads me on to the next question. Chat, I always set you a mm. challenge. Terry is going to be totally unprepared for this, so we're going to see how well he does. Yep. But, right, I want your outrageous headline for St. Kilda Carlton, your prediction, and... What's the most goals Carlton concede in a row this week? Throw you under the bus, boys. Do you want me to start? Yeah, go for it. Chat and Terry, fire away when you're ready. Outrageous call. Zach Fisher, 25 possessions, two plus goals. I knew that was coming. As soon as I asked the question. (laughs) How many consecutive goals will we concede, did you say? Yeah. No more than three. Mm. No more Ooh. than three. Oh, and prediction, Taz? Oh. <laughs> Carlton by 27. I like that, right? Before I give you mine, I'll say what there is. Angus, come on, you've gone with the most likeliest headline there. McGovern lay out. 
<laughs> like, like, I, I, I would say McGovern plays, and that's the outrageous headline. I love it. Um, let's have a look. Um, outrageous honey three goals. Don't mind that. Is that Fez? Yeah, that is Fazzy. That's his. That, that's his real name. If you want to Google him and send him hate. Saints by thirty two. Well done, Jacana. I'm glad you're you're in. Uh, get back midfield. Get back into overdrive. Count by sixteen. I love it. I am going to go. Cripper invokes shades of 2019 versus Brisbane as he steamrolls Steele, 38 and four goals. Carlton by 28. Oof, we're on the same page. I like it. I, I've got a feeling that it's set for Crips, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? People are complaining about him. Jack Steele's back. I've already seen the article, Steele always beats Crips. Oh, my God. The, where's that narrative come from? The St. Kilda supporters have been in my DMs and on Twitter saying that Steele always beats Crips. Always. I think it's so. because he did it once. Mm. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? And everyone remembers it. I think it was that game that I actually lost it on fan cams because he just got involved in wrestling Steel all week. But mm. I think it's a huge game for Crips. I think this is... Just hearing Wheatering talk, I want to talk about hearing Wheatering. I was really impressed with Wheatering's interview because... It was the first time I've heard accountability from this football club that mm-hmm. he was quite black and white. They have been shit. And I loved how he said the forward line was shit. The midfield was shit. We're shit, the defence. It was like a real collective ownership, which I enjoyed. I think the big thing for me, though, was Cripps will be taking that personally, I think, with yeah. the midfield. And he has been under the cosh a little bit. I think this is the type of game Cripps comes out and says, you know what, boys, I'm the best in the league for a reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've got another little prediction. No, it's a guarantee. Ready? Okay, go on. Ollie Hollands will kick his first goal. We're looking forward to old Ollie kicking it. I've, I've actually yeah. updated the background. So this background, you see, it's the last time you see. I'm just putting some finishing touches, but I've got a very sexy picture of Ollie Hollands that will be debuted on the watch along. But Chat, give me your predictions before we leave. It's very important. We will about to wrap it up. But Terry, what are how do you think this game's going? What are you looking for when you're going in? Are you looking for complete performance? Just win? Where are you mentally with this boy? I'm I'm all about their mentality this week. The intensity of the group, like as in be the hunters, literally be the hunters. First of the footy, what we saw last week with Adelaide and how they attack the footy is that is us well that is what we purport to be so let's be us um and for god's sake stop with this net like let's not feed into this narrative of don't let the narrative of what we already know about saint kilda beat us again don't let the narrative around oh it's going to be memory three goals oh it's going to be gresham oh it's going to be sinclair off halfback like don't let the narrative define what happens on sunday create a new narrative uh, be the ball, love it, mate. I agree with you. Like, Cowan fans are the worst for it. They recycle the narrative because it's happened once, twice, three times. Correct. These boys need to stop buying into that. And you know what? We want this time next year when Jake calls you want to blue abroad, him to go. Crips always batters steel. Kerno always baffs Callum Wilkie. That's the narrative that we control, and we can only do that by going out there. And great point here as well by Christian. It is Chera's 100th. So what what's the most common narrative? We lose milestone games. It's Correct. it's a time to change that as well. Yeah. Well, think about it. If the Saints supporters, the St. Kilda players would be confident about this week for sure. Because in their mind, they'd probably be thinking, oh, we know that if we do this, 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 and this, we can beat Carlton. We kind of have their number. What if we come out in the first quarter and bully St. Kilda, get them on the back foot? They won't know what to do because they're not used to us coming into a game and bullying them. Mate, I, I want to see that this season. Yeah. Just us yeah. come out and say we're the better side and we shall shock them because yep. I thought St. Kilda were brilliant last week against Collingwood, but you saw how strong that Collingwood were and you saw it made them a bit vulnerable. We've got to back ourselves in that we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I'll get back yeah. up on. I'll get back up and about when I see us bully bully St Kilda on Sunday. Yeah, I can't wait for you to get that. I'm but like so Christine's mad. Friend. I'm so fired up. You have no idea. I'm so fired up. I'm so frustrated that we haven't bullied a team yet, mate. I'm with you, and like you say, the Italian mafia are there. We've got a few Italians in that side now. We're we're almost the Azzurri. There's that many Italians in there, so that's going to be interesting. But Ladies and gentlemen, we'll let you get back about your day. Go and enjoy yourselves. Go and chill out because in 48 hours, we're at war with St. Kilda for two hours. And let's make sure we're the ones at the top of the mountain by the end of the round. But thank you very much, Terry. Last minute in. He's he's, he's the chera of this team. He's just come in last minute and bullied, bu- bullied Black Dog. <laughs> Go Blues, come on, fire up. Go Blues, come on boys, enjoy your weekend ladies and gentlemen, see you later.